All right, this is a fly that uh, I came up with about five years ago. It's it's a really good stone fly pattern that represents kind of a fluttering or struggling stone fly. Um, and uh, I'm going to tie it in olive to kind of represent our squala stone flies that we have here in Utah that hatch pretty early. But really, this this fly can be tied in in a wide variety of colors. Um, also, on this fly, I'm going to be using a Rainey's two bodies or X fly two bodies in the stone fly. Um, but if you want to build your own extended body for this, or if you want to uh, tie it the the body differently, it's not going to hurt my feelings at all. Um, one modification that I've done is is uh, I'm using the Allen B200 hook on this as well. Uh, this is a size 10 and uh, really the shank on this is similar to a lot of size 6 hooks so uh, I'm going to tie a size 6 fly on this size 10 hook. Anyway I'm going to start by wrapping up some olive UTC 140 just kind of right back here in the back of the, the hook. Um, and I'm going to start out by just attaching some dubbing. Now the dubbing doesn't even matter what kind of dubbing you use. I've got some Arizona synthetic dubbing that I'm going to dub on here. Um, but this dubbing won't even be seen on the fly so it doesn't, doesn't matter what, what kind of dubbing you're going to use. And I just go over it with my thread. The reason for that is this is the tube body and I'm going to just shove it up onto the hook and I'm going to coat this or soak this in super glue so it'll sit right there. Um, also, you see this this two body is too long, so I'm going to cut off about a quarter inch of it. All right, I'm going to take the hook out of the vise, and I'm going to take this body, and just like Bassmaster Uncle Can, we're just going to pierce that through the body and then feed that up onto the top of our dubbing. Reseat that in our hook or in our vise. Um, so I'm going to pull that back. Now I'm going to put some super glue on it. Really soak it in there. And then you shove this up just about like that. Now I'm going to come back on the body and just cinch that down really well. Alright, so our body's done. Okay, the next step is to tie some wings in. Um, and it's all going to be tied out of one clump of deer hair. I've got dark brown deer hair. And I've cut that off the hide. And here's a little fly tying hack for you. Uh, this when Curtis was shopping for pink fingernail polish he bought this Revlon uh, eyelash brush and you can just take that and brush out your your hair and it's going to get out all the shorter fibers and the under fur. Alright I've got all that hair stacked I'm going to pull it out I'm just going to lay that right on top so that it's even with the the end of the body Okay, so I've got that all just kind of going over the body, and that would work, but I, I really want this to be a stonefly in distress. So I'm going to take my finger and rotate it back and forth to split those wings. Now if you didn't cinch those down really well, those wings, that, that hair will pull out right about now. So now I've got it like this, it's all spread out. I'll take some more dubbing and uh, split the wings for good. Okay, I've got some dubbing on my thread and I'm just going to figure eight in between those wings. And again, that dubbing is not going to show. It's just kind of thicker than thread to help uh, keep those wings split. Now to aid with the flotation I'm going to take two full pieces of CDC, just gray CDC or done, and I'm going to put that on top of 
each wing. So I have two pieces on the wing farthest from me. And then two pieces on the other wing. Good. All right, at this point I'm going to switch my thread to GSP because I'm going to build up a bullet head. So I'm just going to take this thread, wrap it forward, and I'm just going to take the GSP thread and wrap over that thread and just trim them off. Now to do this next clump of deer hair, you're going to need a really big hair stacker. The peak hair stacker is really, really good. I'm using this huge stacker from Griffin, uh, but it's in your best interest if you're going to use a lot of deer hair to get a really big stacker. All right, I've got the hair stacked, um, pretty big clump. So I'm going to tie that in about right up, right up behind the hook point. I'm going to tie that about equal to the length of the body. So I'm just going to pinch that right on top of the hook with one loose wrap, and then my next wrap is going to be really firm. Not too firm though. I'm using 200 denier uh, GSP thread and it will cut through this. So you see I, I took out most of the hair with one clip and that's because I'm using these razor scissors and they're they're really good at trimming hair like that. Okay. So now you see I have a bunch of butts back here. I'm just going to take a few wraps through those and cinch them down. But kind of maintaining my hair where I where I set it. I don't want it to rotate too much around the hook. All right, the next part is to make sure you have your hook eye uh, exposed. I, I wrap maybe a little bit too forward, so I'm just going to take the, that clump of hair and rotate it back until my hook eye comes through. Okay, you see that? All right. So now, as you'll see, um, the hair is pretty much distributed around the hook shank. And now all I need to do is tie the bullet head. So I'm going to take my thread back to where I tied that CDC in on the wings. And I'm just going to grab all those fibers and pull them back. Make sure I've got it. All the fibers so they're going where they want to. So if I, as long as I start the bullet head, I can grab these fibers back here that were escaping and keep preening all those back so I can create a nice bullet head. So that's a pretty substantial bullet head. And to make more segmentation now on the head to the body, I'm going to pull that down. You see how that makes the, the hair flare out quite a bit. And these little escapees I can trim off. I can take my fingers and kind of shape the head. But as you can see, it's a little bit more bulky on the top than the bottom, and I really like that because it, it uh, doesn't take away from the hook gap. Okay, at this point, my use of GSP thread is done. It's expensive, and so to conserve on that, I only use it when I absolutely need it. And so I'm just going to take my uh, UTC-70 and reattach that right over the top of where the GSP is. Now I've got some silicone legs that are on our website. This is the froggy green color. Um, and I'm going to take three of those. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to tie them on the far side of this fly. Just with two wraps and then bring those on the other side. And tie them on the side nearest me. Snug those down really tight. And now I'm going to trim the legs so that they're maybe not quite as long as the body, but they, they extend maybe out to where the wing hits. So 
So those front legs are a little bit longer than what I like, so I'm going to pull them all forward and give them a trim. That's about right. So one person uh, a while back saw this fly and they said, well, that doesn't represent a stone fly at all, if you've seen stone flies. And I said, well, it's not supposed to be a, a normal stone fly. It's supposed to be a stone fly in distress. And so like a fluttering stone fly. And man, it really calls the fish up. Um, two final steps for the fly. I'm going to flip it upside down. And I'm going to trim the underside of the bullet head. So that the body shows through. Like this. And then I'm going to add a little strike indicator. I'm just going to take a little one millimeter piece of crosslink foam. And lay it about like that. That's too long, so I'll just take this and trim it about like that. To finish the fly, you can either whip finish it, or what I do usually is I'll just take some super glue and dab that right down in the middle of the strike indicator and trim it off. And then the final thing, it's not a step in the fly tying, but on a bullet head, especially one this big, um, if you were just to go out and fish that, the first fish you would catch on this fly would just explode that bullet head. And so, you know, it's it's not a fly that's, you know, super simple. So you want to protect it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some head cement. I'm using the Sally Hansen Diamond Strength Hardener. Um, I really like this stuff for, for this kind of application. You can see I'm putting it on really thick and it will soak down into the head. Anyway, that's it. That's the Petite Sirloin Stonefly. Tie them, fish them, let us know how they do for you.